Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Coopers. So glad to be with you today, my friend, and glad you're out there. And I'm hoping and trusting the Lord that there are a lot of new viewers every day. Uh, if you've been with me the last couple days, we've had the same guests on, and that's missionaries, Steve and Christina Stewart with Impact Missions. And I'm telling you, it has really been so enlightening to know what the Lord's doing all around the world. And um, the, the diverse ways that they minister to people. And I hope you've enjoyed it. And today um, I want to talk about the, the supernatural. See, I believe in the power of God to heal, to cast out demons, to do anything, to calm the storm. I believe that. And, uh, you know, I think that there's more of it that's visible on the mission fields um, for many reasons. One, one missionary told me this, said their faith is so simple, so simple. And Americans, you know, we kind of get in the weeds on things. So that's what they're going to talk about today. But I hope it's put something in your heart and ignited a passion for what God is doing around the world and pray that there'll be a whole lot more of it going on because we are living in the end times. There's no question about that. We don't have much time left. And I'm going to join Stephanie over there. And this, the name of this is the best chicken pasta salad. So whoever put it together probably put the word best in front of that title, but we'll, we'll make our own decision on that, okay? Before I join her, though, again, let me remind you, we are viewer supported and we appreciate you and all that you've done through the years. I'm amazed at God's faithfulness. And so if you would like to send a financial gift to homekeepers, the information's on your screen. A lot of people like Stephanie, they you do a lot of things online. And so... Um, you could use your debit card or credit card, 1-800-229-0059. Or if you're an old lady like I am, I send checks in the mail. And you can do that too to Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And or a man, because we have men that watch too. Yes, we too. do. I, in fact, I'm kind of um, encouraged and makes me smile a lot because we get mail from men. Mm -hmm. And... Um, some of them say they never miss the program. Mm -hmm. So, so yay. So yes. this recipe is so interesting. <laughs> I would yes. have never thought of putting ranch dressing and steak sauce mm -hmm. together in a recipe. No. So we'll let you know. Trust me, this what face we think. will tell you. This face cannot is. lie. No. It tells the whole story. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to cut that one less chicken tender for me. Mm -hmm. I have some um, chopped up chicken breasts. I have noodles. I have a cup of ranch dressing, three-quarter cup of steak sauce, some uh, cherry tomatoes that I cut, cut up, and onions, and my very favorite, avocado. Oh, yes, and those are I gorgeous. I love avocados, and these are beautiful. I probably eat avocado every day. Do you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. My husband hates it. Really? Oh, yes. I cut it up and he just makes faces. You know, I bet more women like them than men. Yeah, I don't know. And I don't know why I say that. I don't know why you say that either. Our chicken's good. Okay, so we're going to simply, how easy is this? We already cooked the pasta. Mm -hmm. So we're I'm simply going to mix it all together. This would be a great one um, if you had leftover chicken or you could buy a rotisserie chicken and have it already started. But you, you know, know what I was thinking when I looked at that recipe? Weird. Look at all, no, well, weird too, but <laughs> look at all the great, what we call salads. Yes. And it's a meal. This yeah. is an entree, my friend. Yeah. I, I just, I am so mm -hmm. interested when it comes to the, sal the salad dressing and the yeah. steak sauce. So, here, here we go. Here comes the ranch dressing. This is the ranch. And then it's just like A1 steak sauce mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And I'll, I'll put the avocado at the end. I don't want to mash it all up. Yeah. I want it to have it. We might put keep those. Keep its integrity. Mm -hmm. It's okay. pretty. It's very pretty. Look Who thought colors. of this? Like, what mom was like, well, here's whoever, what I have. Let's put it together. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Whoever did, they thought it was so good, they called it the best. The best. And then, of course, you'd love, this would be good if you just chilled it for a while. Mm -hmm. Let all these flavor. Here, get that recipe, would you? I keep flipping them mm -hmm. around. Thank you. Do you want to just throw it away? Because we got a little bit of everything all over it. Yeah. So, okay. 
I'm almost there. I just want to make sure I get a good mixture here. Let me put these in. So good. That's two beautiful, beautiful avocados. So and they're, they're you know, so good. We're, we're very fortunate. Uh, there are things I don't like about Florida, humidity, but um, we sure get great produce. Oh, for sure. Just the best. Yeah, let me rinse real quick. Yeah, yep. The avocado all over my hand. And uh, I maybe could say, oh, this is wonderful, but she couldn't. I couldn't. She can't. <laughs> she could say it, but her, her face, face would, my face would betray say, it. say it. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, okay. I'm ready. I'm nervous. Okay, okay, here we go. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Okay. I'll take a pasta. Oh, of, yeah, that's what I want, avocado, because at least I know I like that. It's good. It's different. It is interesting. Mm -hmm. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, if you chilled that, mm -hmm. that is actually pretty good. But remember, it's got ranch dressing. And steak, and steak sauce. sauce. Like, seriously, who put those things together? Somebody that that's all oh, they, they had, had in their pantry. Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty good, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. You want to try this one just because you want to say you tried it. Mm hmm And serve it to your family and see what they think. Mm hmm So good. Okay. You need to stop eating because you need to I gotta host talk. a show. Mm hmm <laughs> Right. <clears throat> well, I would, I would fix it. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. pretty good. Take it to a church supper. Mm -hmm. You'll have the most interesting pasta salad at the church supper. I can that that, that is very true. So our recipes are free. Our information is coming up on your screen. You can order it the way that's best for you. And after that, if you haven't been with us the last two days, I think you will still enjoy very much uh, the Stuarts and their missionaries that go around the world and very diverse in the way they minister to people. So get your recipe and then uh, sit down and pick up your cup of tea and enjoy this conversation with the stewards. Stay there. More. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, I twisted their arms and asked them to stay. There's uh, so much with this ministry and things that I think we all need to hear. So thank you for giving me uh, a little bit more time. Um, there's several places I want to go, and I said I want to talk about the supernatural, but also I noticed uh, a lot of these great mi uh, ministries in various parts of the world, they get into the prisons. Mm -hmm. and. Our prisons are like a Hilton Hotel next to mm. what, you, what you've been in. And Jesus was rather explicit about going into the prison. So what has been your experience? I know you've been in some. Yes. Um, one of the things that I do when I go into a prison is thank them for allowing us to come and visit them because I said Jesus asked us to do that, and it's a privilege to be mm -hmm. here. And that always confuses them. Um, but I had an opportunity um, in October, I was in uh, Naivasha prison in Kenya. And this was the, we've been in many times, but this was the first time that they let the men all out of the cells. Usually it's kind of the Christians and maybe 400 so people. So they were all out of the they cells and all, you were there? Yeah. And oh, they that were, would scare me to death. <laughs> no, we were fine. <laughs> um, people say, aren't you afraid? And I was like, <laughs> What's the worst could happen? Um, <laughs> just, just a room full of prisoners. That's yeah. all. Well, we, actually, it was outside, and there were thousands. Um, and one of the pastors had been uh, in prison himself. He shared his testimony. Then I, I just shared uh, from the Sermon on the Mount out of the message, and it starts with "Blessed are those who are at the end of their rope." And so I just just started talking. I didn't have a message prepared, and then. Um, our pa pastor friend, he concluded it with um, the 
prisoner next to Jesus saying, remember me. Right. And that was all you have to do is ask Jesus, remember you. So it wasn't That's particularly, a great message. it wasn't particularly profound and it was all off the cuff, you know, right. just led by the spirit. That day, 984 men gave their lives to Jesus. We found out the next day because the ch prison chaplain wrote to us, thanks for the problem, he said. <laughs> and then they needed Bibles. Well, by the time it's just continued to multiply. So we've been able to get, have we got all 2,000 Bibles in? 1,450 no. 1400 Bibles so, so far. far. Um, and it's but now more than 2,000 have come to Christ from that day. And the year before we were in, and uh, Christina was the first woman they'd ever asked to do baptisms in a men's prison, yeah. and she baptized. Uh. Until we ran out of time, we had to go to another place, and the chaplain kept going. He baptized 400 that day. And tell them about the, the, the prisoners with uh, HIV. Yeah, AIDS. so you, you wanted to hear more of the miracle stories. Well... I, um, again in Kenya, um, th I've had a few occasions where I've prayed for someone who had full-blown AIDS. They had medical tests to show that they had it and then after prayer they no longer had So you had documented it. those. Right. Mm -hmm. So when we were in this maximum security prison, Mike said, Mama Christina has an anointing for AIDS and if you'll be brave enough to come forward, she'll pray for you. Uh, seven men came forward, and that I know of, four of them, ha we have documented healings from that. And I try to explain to people, it has nothing to do with me. It's mm -hmm. just Jesus. I'm willing to release the healing mm -hmm. prayer, and then it's up to Jesus what happens. And it's a mystery. It's I always say Jesus isn't a vending machine. You don't put in a prayer and mm -hmm. get out a candy bar, get out a healing, you know. But if we will be so bold as yeah. to pray. He'll go with you. I mentioned uh, on the last program that I wanted to talk about, uh, because if you miss the others, uh, we've talked about how totally comprehensive and complete this ministry is. They want to get them saved, get them in the kingdom. There's a lot of ignorance around the world. They help them with education. They help them with jobs. They get clean water. It's a disgrace that the world doesn't have clean water, but a lot of it doesn't. Medical help. I mean, ministering to the whole man. And what I want to talk to um, Steve about today is, is the supernatural. Uh, I would say many, your ministry was kind of born in a revival. Toronto, maybe? Well, yeah. I I started the first time I saw... Uh, <laughs> first time I prayed for a sick person was in 1977. And they'd been in a terrible car accident. I got a phone call, would you come pray? I still don't know why they asked me. I'd was only, that in Canada? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd only been a Christian for about a year, and I'd never prayed for anyone. And uh, But I went, and they had a whole series of x-rays of broken vertebrae, Christus. I prayed really a lousy little pathetic, pathetic <laughs> prayer. And I she prayed was, a few of those. And she was completely healed. Uh -huh. uh, and that was the start. Um, but uh, whenever we planted churches, we always had opportunity for people to receive mm -hmm. uh, healing prayer. Um, mention your books again. Okay. Uh, when everything changes, uh, we and the journey. Now this has some uh, t testimonies and yeah, 30, uh, 35 specific stories. Specific stories. Um, and when everything changes, not only gives the the the, the why. Um, of the gospel being bigger. There's a very specific section in there on here's, here's a simple model for how to pray for the sick. We've taught, we don't know, countless thousands now um, in the developing world, in Australia, England, Canada, all over, US. Canada, U.S., and they heal the sick. Um, I'm going to be doing it in, in California in, in two weeks. With the and the churches. people who go with you on these journeys of compassion, they, they pray also. They're right there with you. And they all heal the sick. And now we've had about 1,800 uh, times people have come with us, and they all heal the sick. Well, do you look at this uh, as I would look at in the time of Jesus on earth? The miracles attracted the crowds, for one thing. And then he taught them about the kingdom. Well, he said an interesting thing, and he said it twice in John's gospel, uh, John 10, 38, and 14, 11. He said, if you can't believe me, believe the miracles, because they point to me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I've seen this so many times. We've seen now 
a few thousand Muslims come to Christ. And I have never once, um, none of our team, because we teach them not to, we've never got into a discussion comparing Muhammad and Jesus or the Quran and the Bible. Or all we've ever done is, what do you need Jesus to do? And when he heals them, um, I was in a village uh, in Africa, in uh, a Muslim village, and the people were coming forward and getting prayer. And uh, they brought a woman to me. I usually kind of hang back because I want the team to do it. But they brought a, a woman. My recollection is that she would maybe have been 55, 60. She was blind. A Muslim lady. What do you need Jesus to do? I want to see. Well, Jesus is going to heal you right now. And I prayed for her and she got her vision. And then, of course, she came to Christ. And then they went and told her then son, <laughs> who was the, the head of the, of the gang in town. And he came to Christ. And then he went back and got his guns, and one of our team members took him to the police station where he gave them all in. Um, we've seen, um, again, we've seen thousands of Muslims come to the Lord because of miracles. We were one time up in, uh, we were in the Philippines uh, on a trip where we went, followed up a river where uh, a Catholic evangelist 150 years ago had introduced the gospel these villages and the uh, the bishop asked us if the we would bishop. the catholic bishop would you come and 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 reproduce that sure well we saw so many miracles but this one day we were doing a mobile medical clinic and there was they were treating hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and it was it was great but they didn't need me so i wandered away and had a translator and i went into the the, the village the town and uh, i knocked on a door and i was invited into a house where a grandmother uh, she couldn't see, she couldn't hear, and uh, she had great trouble walking. Uh, she couldn't walk, really. She could just stand, probably arthritis. And I prayed for her, and the Lord healed her eyes and her ears and the arthritis. But only when I got to the end of praying for her in this room did I notice about 20 feet away, the door had been open, and there were these teenage girls watching. So I went out. And there was maybe 15 of them, and I started to tell them about Jesus. And I could tell it was going right over their head. They weren't very interested. They were teenage girls. And then I said, you all know Lola? <laughs> yes, of course. I said, and, and do you know that Lola is blind and deaf? Of course, everybody knows that. And I asked someone to bring Lola out. And they started oh, hollering <laughs> to all their friends. And, then, and the next thing I knew, there was... 45 teenagers, and they all gave their lives to Jesus. Miracles are one of the things. The gospel needs to touch every part of right. life, right. but it must also, we got to supernaturally demonstrate the power and reality well, of there's, Christ. Well, there could be nothing more convincing. You know, you've got these teenage girls, and here comes a lady who can see and hear. Um, before we run out of time, probably not a whole lot of occasions, but you do encounter ab absolute demon power. Mm -hmm. uh, and Jesus cast out devils and got the same thing going probably in every part of the world in some measure. I remember one time uh, I was preaching, somebody was preaching, I don't know who it was, in an African nation and this man just started to manifest like crazy. Yeah, I've and, seen it. And the, some of the pastors with their model, they get around and they start yelling and yelling and it was just mm -hmm. getting louder. So I said to Christina, who God really uses in deliverance, would you go deal with that, honey, please? <laughs> and uh, I'll let her take it from there. Actually, I think, I'm thinking of a different story. It was a young woman. In oh. the, the story I'm thinking of also in Africa. But I said, no, I can't go over there because those are pastors and I'm a woman and I'm not going there unless they invite me. And I just said that quietly to him. And then one of them turned and said, could you come help us, please? And so I, I had the young woman stand up and go over behind our bus. And mm -hmm. I said to the pastors, you can come with if you want, but we don't need her to be a spectacle in front of the crowd here. And, uh, and I very much believe in just knowing our authority and speaking quietly and firmly and taking authority and breaking the power and telling it to leave. And that's all what happened. And these pastors were very confused because it's not the model they're used to. Mm -hmm. And this girl repented for her some things that it's she had done. Not the volume, <laughs> right? And she no, it she needed to repent for some choices she'd made, mm -hmm. and it, which had well, left I've seen her it open. here in the United yeah. States. Yeah. So 
And then I saw reconciliation with her and her mom, who was watching the whole thing going on. And so that was pretty special. So when people come on journeys, the first two days we do orientation because they come from all different backgrounds. And part of that is we teach them, what do you do if somebody starts to manifest right. demonically? Mm -hmm. Just like we teach them about healing and, and so forth. How to lead someone to Christ. A lot of Christians mm -hmm. don't, need, don't know how mm -hmm. to lead someone to Jesus. And uh, we mentioned this on the last program, but uh, again, if it's been in your heart, maybe from time to time, uh, to go on a missionary trip, you can get the information from that website there, and you will never, ever, ever be the same. <laughs> Christina does uh, trips for women. Uh, oh, trips for women. Yeah. Just oh, really? specifically that focus goes on specifically, taking women to women. Uh, mm -hmm. That's especially where she focuses on prostituted women, abused women, prison, women in women prison. In prison. And uh, they, they go in where it's better for it to be all women. And in fact, mm -hmm. you said last fall was we've done 77 journeys of compassion now. And you said that was the 77? most. Seventy-seven. Wow. Yeah. You said that that women's trip. Yeah, that was my favorite. So I'm East doing Africa one. Was I'm doing one powerful. again this year in September t into Kenya, and then one in February into Uganda. Mm -hmm. Those are the two that are planned right now, just for women. We hear a lot in the states about human trafficking, mm -hmm. and um, of course that's worldwide. But are there a whole lot more what you could really call and and identify? as a slave, a lot of slavery around the world. The estimate right now is that there are, whether it's um, sex trafficking or working in brick factories or the garment industry is a huge one, um, they estimate 28 million slaves right now, which means today there's more slaves than the uh, cumulative total of 400 years of the slave trade. I've actually read an updated uh, the, the number I most recently read was 40 million. 40 million. Yeah. Because especially with the sex trafficking, it's going up and up and up. One, mm -hmm. one guy who steals a child or a teenager can, can sell that child over and over and over again mm -hmm. and make hundreds of thousands of dollars in a year. It's you very know, sad. One of the things, and, and I appreciate how you've, you've reminded them that they can come on a journey with us, but also if they go on our website, there are continuously opportunities to rescue women, to rescue children, mm -hmm. to get clean water. We, we actually spend more time on the projects that the journeys opened up an area for us. And now mm -hmm. we build the relationships and we do the ongoing mm -hmm. sustainable projects. So people can look there and see how they can get involved. Mm -hmm. um, as you look back over your life, I would um Say maybe you're surprised that <laughs> I thought I married a school, school, school teacher. <laughs> we were going to live in the suburbs, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to play the piano in a bar. Yeah, that point, was what yeah. I wanted to do. But uh, we were thrilled. You know, we always joke, did we win the, the kingdom lottery or something? I mean, we're having the time of our life. And we are thrilled that more and more people are being raised up to do what we yeah. do mm -hmm. so that it's happening all over the world now. I'll tell you what, your ministry's reminded me of the, the, the absolute totality of the gospel, mm -hmm. uh, how it touches every part of our lives and, and how we, we live so far beneath, uh, we uh, American Christians, we live way beneath the privileges that are there in Christ. Um, I don't know if it's because of our prosperity or materialism. We're comfortable. Or what, but but y yeah. you've reminded us he, he, wants, he wants to be involved in everything. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's the great adventure. This is, you know, this isn't some kind of burden. This is, this is the great adventure. I watch, we watch men and women just come alive. Mm -hmm. and, uh, well, I'm so thankful to be able to take this to the Homekeepers audience because there are precious women sitting out there that are going to pray for you. Amen. From now on. <laughs> we need Thank that. You. Now, where's your next, where's your next trip? The next, well, the next one is uh, on this week to this India, weekend, but we're not going to India. Mm -hmm. um, and then we actually have a little bit of a gap because we're spending a lot more you time. You wouldn't on dare projects. take a little break, would you? And rest? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we're, we're going to be in Australia, <laughs> Australia for, two, for months, two months, April and, and May. Um, you know, rest is in the Bible, right? Yeah, and I really believe in it. Yeah. I really and we need time with our grandkids and yeah, you know, yeah, of all of that. 
Well, thanks so much for coming by. And um, thank you for having us. If you come around again, let's do it. Thank That's you. Great. Thank you. Uh, you stay with me. I have a couple of things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Okay, let me remind you, we are viewer-supported, my friends, and... We have the information on the screen if you would like to support us. Uh, we're one of the few programs that just totally put the spotlight on the home and from the home try to take you around the world so you can know what God is doing. You can send a check through the box number 6922 Clearwater, Florida 33758 or that 800 number is there for your credit cards or debit cards 1-800-229-0059. And thank you so much for everything that you do for us, that you have done for us, and what will be accomplished in the future. I, <clears throat> I hope that your vision has been enlarged the last three days on this program. <clears throat> Pardon me, to know what's going on around the world and the endeavor of missions and to introduce the world to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the only way to heaven there's only one way and um, I'm just certain that some of you who maybe grew up in Sunday school and church and every once in a while a you know a missionary would come through and it would really ignite something in you I was thinking of one of the most beautiful verses ever to just explain the mission field and it's the song it's the words from rescue the perishing care for the dying Snatch them in pity from sin in the grave. Weep o'er the erring one, lift up the fall, and tell them of Jesus, the mighty one to save. And that is exactly what's supposed to be happening in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And <clears throat> his whole, Jesus' whole experience was really missions, drawing people into the kingdom. There were signs and wonders like these people see on the mission field, but they were meant to point people to the kingdom of God. So I hope that this will really stay with you and you'll remember, pray for these good people and that you'll join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.